So there's many options out there for storing SX-70s in albums. Uh, certainly Polaroid them, makes a few of them themselves, and there are also crafty versions on Etsy and elsewhere that can be purchased. And there's also the through ring binder approach using, uh, for example, the print file 44-8P print preserver sheets. And they all work and for the most part, they're all also archivally safe. But I got two big issues with these types of albums. First of all, they all use some form of plastic sleeve to hold the photographs. And sure, they're sold as crystal clear plastic sleeves, but pop in a Polaroid and all I see is the shiny dimensionality of my photographs being sapped by the reflective and cloudy plastic sleeves. Second, none of these albums really present Polaroids to their best. There is no isolation of the photographs from their background, such as a good mat would provide. In most cases, the album pages are displaying a gang of four prints, such as this Polaroid album. So yes, these albums do have a casualness that is perhaps appropriate to the way Polaroids are usually consumed, so I'm not dismissing their utility and why they're so popular, but to me, these albums are more of a warehousing approach. What I prefer is a standard scrapbook with um, nice thick paper pages and photos mounted maybe one or two per page with photo corners, so that when I turn a page, all I see is my photograph nicely framed on a broad white or black background. Now the problem is that SX-70s are really quite thick. They're much thicker than paper-based photos that are normally put in albums. Most scrapbooks are not really designed to accommodate this thickness. And once the Polaroid is mounted on each page of a scrapbook, you'll find that the album actually bulges badly and the pages sag under the weight of an SX-70. It's really not ideal. Now it is possible to modify a standard scrapbook to make it work, but it does take some effort. The idea is to start with a good quality screw bound album, such as those that are made by Goldbuch. It's a German company, and this is their summertime 25 by 30 centimeter extendable screw bound album number 26606. It has a really nice clean looking linen hardcover and 20 relatively thick white pages. But to make it work with Polaroids, I had to remove the screw posts cut 20 strips of two-ply conservation board to place along the spine and act as spacers between each of the pages. And of course I had to punch the strips to match the screw album's screw post holes and this requires an adjustable three-hole punch. And then I had to reassemble the album using much longer screw posts. So that's a fair bit of work and although the photographs are presented the way I like and the album does look professional, I do find the pages are still too light in weight to support the Polaroids. They still seem to sag and feel a bit light compared to the weight of the, of the Polaroids themselves. So I enter Grimm books. Now Iris Grimm of Boston makes some really handsome custom designed archival albums and scrapbooks that are ideal for Polaroids. She does in fact make Polaroid albums and although they come with uh, standard plastic sleeves, they do look fantastic. However, I decided to go with a different direction with my Grimm book. Now in 2020, I was researching album ideas for my From Our Windows project that would show my SX-70s at their best. And my inspiration was the book William Eggleston Polaroid SX-70, published by Steidl in 2019. Now it's an extraordinary book showcasing Eggleston's Polaroids and certainly well worth owning but I was particularly taken with by the book design, which uh, I understand was meant to imitate the phot photographer's own Polaroid brand album. Now the style book pages are black and the photo frames are spot printed with white ink on the black paper. And the images are then spot varnished, glossy, just in the image area themselves. And certainly, really it's the most accurate reproduction of SX-70s I've seen. And I certainly love the feel of the heavy black scrapbook paper. And that led me to order a grim personalized eight and a half by 11 inch portrait photo album with 80 pages inside. Now I chose the book cloth and the end paper color. And that time, at that time I hadn't completed my project, but I was anticipating about 68 SX-70 photos spread over about 72 pages with most of the photos laid out with one photo centered on each page in two page spreads. 
and then any remaining pages would be used for perhaps text on paper inserts or for outtake photographs or just left blank. Now the linen cover, cloth and end papers come with a wide array of lively color combinations to choose from. Uh, the Grimm album pages themselves are normally white but I worked with Iris to substitute these for a black paper at a slight surcharge. The linen threads on the long stitch binding sh shown on the spine of the album uh, can be normally or ordered to coordinate with the linen cover cloth but for my book I had a I chose a black linen thread which was used to match the black paper on the inside. Now I also selected my my title of course and my font and the placement on the cover and then Iris emailed me a proof for approval uh, before she started production of the book and then she also determined the depth of the spine to accommodate all my photographs ensuring that the whole book would not bulge once I had it filled with all my photographs. Once I got the book I made a couple of paper templates that would help me position um, either one photo such as this case or two photos per page. What I did is I would then take the template, align it with the top corner, just put on a couple of binder clips just to hold it in place then I would take a uh, take a scrap SX-70 picture, I'm sure we've all got lots of these, would place a couple of four pieces of uh, masking tape on each corner of the, of the of the page and then I would take my uh, photo corners and take those and I would just put them on each corner and use put them hold them on tightly and then roll the masking tape back over so that they would hold them in place then once I got all four of my corners in place then I, all I had to do was just to place the picture there um, push it down making sure that the corners were sticking to the page peel back the masking tape and then just remove the scrap photo and then I would just then replace that with the final photograph in place. So that way I could align the photographs, get them positioned correctly without having to put any marks on the pages themselves. Now the album does come with clear plastic photo sleeves that slip over the individual pages. And at the time of ordering I wasn't, was not nearly so adverse to using plastic sleeves, but once I received the finished album and started loading the photographs, it was pretty clear that they were gonna be discarded and just put them aside so perhaps if you're doing this again or if I'm doing this again for example uh, I would maybe just maybe ask Iris if I could order it without the plastic sleeves at all. Now I'm extremely happy with my Grimm album it's really well designed and it's really a good looking book. Uh, the black pages are thick enough to support the mounted S670s and the pages lay flat when opened. Now, one of the advantages of a gallery presentation is that the photos can be sequenced to develop a visual storyline from start to finish. So it's like, almost like a photo book, except that in this case, it's a book of original artwork. And if the urge or need strikes, the photos can be removed without harm and mounted in a frame. Now, of course, there's a premium to be paid for such a bespoke product. Um, my album cost USD about $128. But considering the enormous film cost for this project, it seems only fitting to get the best possible album. So my recommendation is that if you are really serious about your Polaroid photography and you have an edit edited set of photos that you're proud of and that you want to share with others, I'd really consider getting a grim album. So until next time, toodles and don't forget to subscribe below.